What's that stench? Did someone break wind? It wasn't me. I promise. Breathe it in. It smells like a skunk mixed with rotten eggs. Oh, tell me, what did you have for lunch today? There's so many ways to say I farted Like I tuned it or I passed some gas Hey, it's okay, it's okay if you farted Toxic fumes just be coming at your Floating their biscuits or a belching clown Fanny Frog makes the world go round Steam press your Calvins, well friend, you're in luck Split in the seam or step on a duck. Some thunder from down under is fun. When testing in the Levi Wind Tunnel is done. And you can tell when a rattler is near. When you are hearing that roar from the rear. So many ways to say I farted. Like a pop tart or power puff. Hey, it's okay, it's okay if you farted. Even grandmas and grandpas make a fluff. <laughs> farted. I farted. Oh man! Well, oh, you know, I, I, I've seen Moana before a lot because my my daughter loves that movie. Yeah. I don't remember that version being <laughs> <No>. in the movie. <laughs> that is the uh, Trevor Shand version. Uh, he sent. I knew I me. recognized that voice. Yeah, yeah. He sent that Amazing. to me on Friday, and uh, <laughs> he 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 said, "Here's my." Timely Moana parody. <laughs> <laughs> is he still the poor guy still doing parody songs, or is it just for fun? Oh, this at this point, I think um, he gets a, an idea in his head and he has to get it out. You know, so I think this is what happened. He got something stuck in his head. He sent it to me. I was like, dude, I am totally playing that on Janky Town. And yeah, Trevor's Trevor Shan's uh, the guy we had on about five episodes from the Boo Crew podcast. And uh, yeah, that that podcast is amazing. Talks about horror and they have a bunch of like uh, artists they just recently had Kesha on I mean they have a bunch of big name people uh, yeah Trevor Shand imaging director of 16 stations on intercom for the alternative market uh, the Boo Crew podcast is where you could find him and uh, if you guys just heard this uh, high tweeter voice just just a second ago we have lightning in the house how yeah! dare you with the tweeter reference? <laughs> <laughs> What's Woo! up, man? How are no you? Base. How you do? <laughs> What's happening? What's happening, man? Hey, so I, you know, I was thinking about having you. Dave the King Mexico is unable to join us for this episode, so we asked Lightning. Is he dead? Does no. he have the nineteen? <laughs> <laughs> the nineteen. I like that. <laughs> he is not good... dead. He. How come a... no one has remixed Paul Hardcastle's uh, no, 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 nineteen, nineteen? Oh my god! I haven't heard that. Like because what, that song up, is thirty-five years old. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. So like. 22-year-olds would have never heard it before. That is true. That is true. They'd be like, what is this industrial song? It's, it's, it's Get awesome. on the case. I will, I will, I will do that. No, no, but, no, 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 19. Uh, so, so, so Lightning graciously said yes, he would come and host uh, an episode of Janky Town and kind of be our, our guest as well because, as I remember... We had you, obviously, you're the godfather of the B-team, which kind of mm -hmm. got everything rolling. I'm going to need this monster. Sorry, I'm just... Uh, <laughs> no, yeah. no, Whoa, it'll be a long no, night. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Hey, by the Ooh. way, I saw you last night. You were working <laughs> Yes, we are sponsored, by the way. Ungodly <laughs> nice. hours. How many hours are you working now? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> you are nonstop, my friend. You're nonstop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a crazy schedule. I remember one time when I had a family. Yeah. But then... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so I start, I'm generally at work at this office right here in Azusa um, at about uh, 7 in, in the morning, and I typically go home uh, 8, 9 o'clock at night, which is stupid, but that's what I do. I'm, I'm pretty dedicated to it. So that leads me nicely into uh, one of except the Except for Tuesday nights, though, Omar, except for Tuesday nights okay. when I rush over to El Segundo to Motor Trend and record the Truck Show podcast. The very popular Truck Show podcast, yes. So you left KROQ to work at Banks Power, which is a huge company that... Wh what do they make, Light? Um, today, we're most popular for diesel performance products. So if you have a big, full, you know, like a full-size truck with a diesel engine, yeah. we make you go faster or okay. we make your fuel economy better. In short, um, going back to 1958 when the company was founded, with turbos, superchargers, forced induction, uh, we have a whole – our whole lobby is filled with world records. Wow. So Bonneville salt flat, salt flat records, things like that. Um, and then our military would know this company for producing all of the engines that go in the joint light tactical vehicles. That's the JLTV, the replacement for the Hummer. 
So the hum, big hum V. Right. We make all of those engines. So that, uh, wow. Do, do you lot. do anything anything for four bangers? Uh, we do have a pedal monster. What are you driving? I I, I was just curious. I, I have a six uh, banger. I, I thought you were talking about a porno. <laughs> I was like, oh, that too. <laughs> the four banger. <laughs> yeah. So listen, I, I didn't come on here to, to to plug all that stuff, but but we do uh, recently. It's crazy. So for the last when I joined the company in whatever it was seventeen or eighteen uh, when I left K Rock. Um, we, I've helped to launch some new products, which has been incredibly rewarding and fun. One of those is called a Pedal Monster. It's uh, we, we came out with it just before Christmas, and uh, it's a throttle booster. So it really gives you really great pedal response, throttle response in your cars, uh, in your car or truck. And it's for like, my God, I mean, this, the, the applications, hold on. Uh, he has one right there. He's, he's grabbing it. I'll tell you what. Oh, of course. Watch him, but like. Oh. This is, I'm showing you on camera, so you guys who are yeah. listening, you can't all see. All the but vehicles? This is a laundry wow. list of all the vehicles wow. it fits. Is, it, and I'd is love Prius to on there? On whatever you're driving. Yeah, Prius is on here. Wow. I could tell, I, I've driven my mom's Prius, and it needs, it's terrible acceleration going uphill. Terrible. But that's, this will you know, help. That's this will help. Day. So if you, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you want to hit me up uh, at LBC Lightning on the gram, and uh, I can hook you up with whatever you drive. You know, some, Lightning, uh, Lightning is this your dream job? Uh, it's one of them. Yeah, because you've. Uh, I mean, for the Kevin and Bean audience who grew up listening to you and hearing you produce Kevin and Bean, uh, you have always been into cars. Uh, you had a insanely ridiculous uh, monster truck at one point. Uh, you drive a mini, but you are you are a car head. How did you get this job at Banks? Uh, so you remember the big lifted truck, the one you're talking about, the Rock Crusher, R O Q. Yeah. Big rock oh crusher, my God. Right? Yeah. How could I forget that? You redid that thing like three different times, and I, I, it, I was <laughs> yeah. always sh- shake my head, like how, like you did this amazing job tricking it out, and then you strip it and you do it all over again. How is that a thing? How? Why but didn't you know just, what? Yeah. No. So Omar, it's like you with audio equipment, and I'll make it hit home for you. Just when your DJ rig is is Sano, it's it's like it's exactly what you need. You're like. Mm, I just opened up a catalog and they've got this new mixer. They've got this. And you're like, right. because as much as it is a tool for you or it's a play thing, you are like me and that you enjoy the, 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 the building of the Legos. Yeah. And then when you finally make the spaceship or the castle, you're like, eh, take it apart and do it again. It's the process of building it. And when it's all done, you're like, oh, it's a fun car and I'll drive it on Sundays. But really, the magic's over. I've built it. So you either rebuild it or you sell it and you buy another one. Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. So what? What, ha- what happened? So, with oh, the, you, yeah. to, to answer your question about the uh, the Rock Crusher, uh, originally, you know, as you recall, all radio stations. I feel like I'm distorting a little bit. Is that true? Uh, no, you sound great. Land? You sound great. Sound good. You sound good. I'm. Okay, sorry. Um, with all radio stations, they all drove those Chevy vans, right? The Chevy Express van. Like, maybe there's an occasional bread truck or something, but really it was just these homogenous trucks that got the the obligatory wrap with the call letters on it. And I wanted to buy a – I wanted to do something special for the radio station. I also wanted to pull a boat. I never ended up doing anything with a boat, nor did I need to pull it anywhere. But I bought this giant dually, and I had it trucked in from Arizona. It was exactly the one I wanted, and I thought, I'm going to leave it bone stock and pull this boat. A month after I got it, I go, nah, God, I'm going to start doing <laughs> stuff to it. I want to take it to SEMA, to the world's biggest car convention in Las Vegas. And I th- thought, how can I get everything on here that I want? Well, I could use the power of K-Rock. You know, it's a big rock radio station. Yeah. Most of the after- important aftermarket parts companies are based in Southern California and might have an interest in, in helping this project. So I went to Mr. Weatherby, the program director at the time, and I said, How do you feel about building this crazy monster truck that could go to Monster Jam and Off-Road Expo and, and, you know, the opening of this and Santa Anita and all these things, right, just to be a giant billboard? He says, and I showed him a rendering. I actually had it drawn up by a friend of mine. And I presented it to him, slid it across his his giant, whatever that was, like oak desk he had there. And he looked at it, he goes, this is bitching, but we, we can't afford to do this. I said, what if I covered the cost? And he goes, well, I'm interested. I said, I'll, I'll get it all comped everything will be paid nice. for all you have to do is is get the approval to for me to have a big k-rock on the side and he called up linda feldman the attorney you remember linda oh yeah and, uh, the, linda said, was Look. notorious for saying no all the time so i'm surprised she said yes <laughs> not to me <laughs> yeah. not to me but linda i had been there i had known linda since she started back when it was infinity way back in the day working for mel carmazon wow and i'm going back a few you know companies ago yeah. as the com- you know it's now intercom it was viacom and cbs and infinity whatnot right and she said look we've never put k-rock 
or a CBS owned logo on a non CBS owned car or truck. Cause hmm. it's a, if you mow someone down through a crosswalk, we're going to get sued, right? They have a big target. They have big, you know, deep pockets, but she says, we've known you for so long. You've always done right by our legal team. If you go out and get commercial insurance, um, for the tune of $4 million, Whoa. you can put K-Rock on the side. Is that uh, all? So uh, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> wait, Annual, wait, wait. I, had to, I had to have $4 million of four, coverage. How much wow. was, how much was that a month? A month? Uh, a month. <laughs> yeah. It, was, it ended up being four grand a year. Jeez, wow. Just, did did, yeah, I, did like AIS hook you up? Year. I'm going to be pissed <laughs> if they didn't. So I called Mark, the guy that I I reported to, you know, at yeah. the, did commercials for at AIS at the time. Yeah. And he says, you know, we don't handle that, but I do have a, a counterpart company, okay. a, a sister company that does do that. All right. And they hooked me up with the insurance. Flash forward, I built the truck. And in the process of building the truck, do you guys remember Big Leo? I'm going back a ways. Like some of Leo the early Big, 90s Leo listeners no, might no. remember Big Leo. His no. name was Brian Suits. Brian Suits oh, is on Brian KFI Suits. right now. I know who Brian Suits oh. is. Yeah, he was so Big Leo. Brian Suits. He was Big Leo, and also Squishy the Clown. Hey, I'm Squishy the Clown. You know, and, and he was <laughs> like a super sexist and racist and everything else in the '90s. And he was an occasional character on kind of like around the same time he as. Has the uh, doors um, open. <laughs> See, this is the yeah. joys of recording at home. Light, like, anything yes. can happen. My phone can ring. Oh, uh, Omar's wife could come in. Uh, my daughter He's yelling. Her you're yelling at time. Cassie. Yeah, uh, I'm recording. So okay, I just wanted to make sure no stranger walked inside the house. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. No light. edits. No edits at all. No, no edits, dude. Down. No, no. There's janky SF. All right, sorry, Light. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't even. Oh, we were talking about Brian Suits. Anyway, so yeah. Brian Suits is a, is a huge deal on KFI AM six forty in yeah. LA right now, and a big military guy, whatnot. And anyway, so he, I met. I'm backstage at um, one of Kevin Bean's. I don't know the the, the comedy nights. April Foolishness. April Foolishness. Right. April Foolishness. Thank you. And I, we're having a beer, and he goes, "Light, what's going on?" We hug, and we're, we're hanging out because you know, we're good friends. And he goes, "It's like, hey, uh, what are you doing right now?" I go, "Well, I'm, you know, I'm building. We're talking cars." And he goes, I, I, "I'm building a big truck." And he goes, "Oh, you need to talk to a friend of mine." I says, "How do you know anyone in the automotive world?" He goes, "No, I, I got a friend." His name is Gail Banks. I said, you know Gail Banks, the Gail Banks, because if you're in automotive, you know the name Gail Banks for being on every magazine cover in the 80s and 90s and all that stuff. And he goes, yeah, I'll, I'll set you up with him. Flash forward, I called, I called Gail Banks and, and we became fast friends. We're going to like jazz nights up in, uh, up, up in Hollywood Hills at some of his friends' houses and he's like an old time Hollywood guy as well. And it was, hold, and on, we hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on one second. Jazz nights, I said that. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> wait, wait. Picture okay, it, Omar. Okay, Picture did, it. did you enjoy the jazz night or, or it was like, <laughs> yes, was like J- yes. J- Dave Kaz up there not, or <laughs> like what was happening? So right? here's the, oh, so here's, here's, uh, I, and we're going all these it's crazy It's fine, tangents. it's fine. It's all good. <laughs> I love, I want to hear, was Kenny, uh, Kenny G like, you know, like rocking out up there? Tell me about the jazz so almost, nights, man. <laughs> almost, almost. <laughs> Gail, Gail's best, one of Gail's best friends is Alan Goldman. Now, Alan Goldman has a house up in uh, uh, Mount Washington and has converted this massive front room that overlooks the entire downtown L.A. area into a, uh, a studio, like a legitimate recording studio okay. where all of these famous musicians come up every Tuesday night and jam. It's a giant jam sesh. And wow. there's room for about... 10 viewers to sit on this big couch and he's got a full bar and everything and it is the most beautiful JBL sound system and it's just it's insane and and so he has musicians that play that recorded the theme to Star Wars like Whoa. legitimate absolute Grammy uh, multi you know multiple time Grammy winners right. that play that just jam whether it's timpani or the 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 cello and all this it's, it's like, insane. So just he picture, invited me I up just there. Picture lightning walking and he's like, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about cars. And then John Williams is I'm telling you, it's that it was that weird. It was oh, and it's this nondescript house on this nondescript street, and you walk and you go uh, and you look around and you like in wonderment, you go, what the hell? And it's this amazing studio. And then just people just start jamming. Wow. That's and, awesome. and so, no, I don't know anything about jazz. Zero zip. <laughs> and but- yet, and I'm sitting here just in awe. And it's amazing. So uh, flash forward. So I, I start talking to Gail and, and he needed someone to help with multimedia. He needed someone to help with social media, et cetera. And after the course of about. Oh man, you've been doing that for years at K-Rock, years, right? 
at that it, point. It was, all, it was everything that I was already doing, but as yeah. you guys know, I was beating my head against the wall of K-Rock because yeah. everything we were coming up with, they were like, they were just, no, we're not doing this, we're not doing that, or right. how do we monetize it? We couldn't figure out. They couldn't get out of their own way, yeah, and, right. and that was an issue. And Gail says, here are the keys to the castle, right here, literally. Whatever you want to do, come over to our spot. We realize it's a massive jump for you, but give it a shot. He's like, you can probably always get back into radio. And I, I just, I rolled the dice and went with it, you know. And my wife's like, are you sure? And I, and I tried it. And it's been awesome. It's wow. been awesome. Now, I'm not going to say that I don't miss radio. I absolutely miss radio. Uh, you know, I get to do the podcast, which keeps, you know, those muscles working. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I, radio is, you're still in radio. You're, with, you know, Striker yeah. and Vine. Yeah, yeah. And Muggos, you're, you're still doing the K-Rock thing. Yeah, and you guys are over there, but but you, let's not. We're not. There's no, there's no secrets. Radio is not on an upward trajectory, right? Wait, and what? I, well, I mean, like, <laughs> it's audio is on an upward trajectory. So yeah. the good thing about what you guys do, you're both on the production end. There will always be a need for what you guys do, right? For making sound effects, jingles, voice talent, all the stuff you do. There's always going to be positions for you. But as far as like just the regular host or. Um, new music discovery. Yeah. It's, it's not happening on the radio anymore. No, the yeah. kids are it's tapping, uh, on TikTok. Not. They're tapping on TikTok yeah, it, or just Spotify. Yeah. That's how they're, you know, definitely finding all the music. Uh, YouTube. I mean, yeah, YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. Yeah, YouTube is totally. the number one source of music on the planet. Yeah. So, but, uh, new as music. far as far as like talking <clears throat> and like you said, like hosting and stuff, but not so much music, you're right. But talking and hosting, radio still, I think, has the the live aspect going for it. Like, you know, Stryker and Klein are doing it live. Kevin and Bean did it live. So people like to tune in and listen to see what happens dude, live. Dude, only whereas... for a while. I mean, look at Clubhouse. Are you following Clubhouse? <clears throat> no. What's you that? Know, Clubhouse another has got like a million thing, dollar right? valuation already. What's wow. that? Wow. It's another social media type app or what is what is Clubhouse? So what happened is, is these guys who were already serial entrepreneurs, I don't know their backstory. I did a quick dive on it, not, not deep enough. And... Um, they already had some pockets with some cash, and they were looking to, to do something. And when COVID first started, they realized that uh, a couple months into it, people were having issues with uh, having um, going into depression because they weren't having any social contact, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And he and he thought, you know, the, people aren't comfortable going on video. So what's the platform? And these guys got together and created a social platform for audio. And um, look it up, Clubhouse. So oh, the wow. thing Clubhouse. is, they were brilliant in that they started it like Facebook. If you recall back in the day, the only way to get on Facebook is to have a .edu email address. You had to right. be a college student, which yeah. meant that the other people on it were always were equally or hotter than you. You meaning yeah. like you were on it because you were a guy and you wanted to. It was the Facebook. It was your right. yearbook, right, for everyone in college. But you didn't know the girl sitting across from you in you know in in history two hundred one. Um, but you could look her up and you could match the picture and go and you could you could get to her. Right. And that's how it exploded because it was this you knew all the cool people were on this platform. Well, Clubhouse launched the same way. Mm. They spread it out to a couple of influencers. Um, the first person that I knew was on it was uh, Chelsea Lauren. And Chelsea is the photographer from the old photographer from the Red Bull Sound Space at K-Rock. OK, you've seen her. You may not re recognize the name, but. She's an influencer because she in the in the photography space in Hollywood. She photographs. She her her thing. She photographs anyone and everything. But her her deal is women in Hollywood. She she is the first one to get a call when it's when uh, you know a famous actress or uh, or politician or anyone needs to be shot. They call up Chelsea. Wow. She's her demeanor. Her 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 her. It, she's just amazing. I saw her on Clubhouse. And then um, someone invited me, and you have to be invited to Clubhouse. Right. So you can't just join. And the more people that you, uh, uh, you, you jump into Clubhouse, you yeah. earn points, and then you can invite more people. So wow. it's interesting how they're doing it. They're making people want to get in who can't, and you have to earn your way in. Uh, but what it, what it is is people are setting up a time and a place. or They're saying like 5 p.m. Friday, the photography group is going to be um, – Chelsea's going to host this photography group, and she'll have 500 people all listening to an audio conversation with famous photographers. Wow. And, and what happens is the button where you can raise your hand, and when you raise your hand, she can make you a co-moderator. You right. ask your question, and then she mutes you or pushes you out again. Um, it's neat. And I'm not saying that this will – this this clubhouse is going to take over for radio, but it is um, – it's the it's, there are these new things that are coming out that are all finally 
chiseling away. I was there through all those years, Omar, as were you, sitting around that giant conference room table at 5901 Venice, right, where we were being told by the management that that the Spotify's, the Pandora's, um, all these mediums, uh, especially satellite radio, were not hurting radio, terrestrial yeah. radio. But they, they were enhancing not going to matter. They were, bringing, they were bringing more people to the table. And that was true. We weren't just drinking the Kool-Aid. Like, that actually happened. When satellite launched and Stern went to satellite, it brought new people in, so the pool got bigger. Yeah. But what happened is now, now it's finally starting to fracture, and it's starting to uh, get more niche. And so you're listening to... If you're into photography, you're going to go where the photography is. Right. Yeah, and that makes you're gonna, sense. You're gonna, that's where you're going to hang out. And uh, if that's on an app on your phone, that's where you're going to find your audio. Let's talk about a little bit about uh, post Kevin and Bean life, and uh, get your perspective on all the different shows that are out there. You know, including uh, you know uh, Bean and Alley show, Ralph's, Kevin, now Kevin and Sluggo. Have you uh, mm-hmm. tuned into any of that stuff? Because I would get some. Uh, what's your uh, perspective on you know the Kevin and Bean afterlife? And uh, I also want to touch upon uh, how active you are on the Facebook, uh, the Kevin and Bean social uh, Facebook group that there is. Before you answer that, Light, before you answer that, I forgot to ask you one question. <clears throat> before you went to Banks, how long were you at K-Rock? Just to give, so, just to give the listeners a, an idea of how long you were yeah. there. 26 years. Wow. Almost as long, four when years I left, shorter than Kevin and Bean. When I, was, when I left, I was there the majority of my life. Meaning, I'm sorry, yeah. more than half of my life. I'm sorry. Right. Wow. Yeah. So a long time. Yeah. Insane. So insane. back to Omar's uh, question. Uh, for the other shows, so first off, in a weird way, I'm bummed that everyone now has new shows. And I, I say that because I think there was some um, – it's no different than when Michael Jordan left, right? Left ba- basketball. Mm-hmm. And there was this – and he was – you had this wonderful memory of all that Michael Jordan was – and then he came and tried to do golf and, and then baseball. God knows what he did. Did he do football and stuff? Like he was doing everything, baseball, right? Baseball, yeah. yeah. Do, baseball, sorry. And he just wasn't as good as the other players he surrounded himself with. And he yeah. should have, now, he could, could have gone into management. That would have been awesome. But he didn't. And it kind of tainted a little bit of the Michael mm. Jordan legacy in my mind. I'm sure there will be people that will say I'm full of crap, but I, I think that he tarnished his, his, his legacy because. He should have just bow out, just just got out, and 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 I think that it's that's how I feel about the Kevin and Bean show. I know it ended really sour, right? It sucked how it all fell apart. Yeah, um, but I I think that most people remember the Kevin and Bean show as this really amazing, hilarious show that brought people together, and and I think that's how we all that's how we all remember it, and I. And now that it's back and it's all in, in these discombobulated pieces, Kevin and, you know, Sluggo on KLOS and being in the UK with Ali, and I just, um, it's good. I'm happy for them that they're doing what they love to do. Yeah. But it will always, I think it will pale in comparison to what they, everyone used to do as a group. You know, it's no different when a band breaks up and yes, there are, McCartney is arguably as big well, no. Is McCartney as big as the Beatles? No, I guess he's not, right? Uh, so no, I think the I Beatles think broke no. up. The Beatles broke up, and yeah, they're all still really talented. Kevin's still funny. Bean is still the quickest, wittiest man I've ever met in my life. Right. So these things are still all true, but the magic of the show is gone, and I, that bums me out because I, I would have liked them to just maybe. Is it am I a dick for saying stay retired? Uh, I don't know. No, I mean it's one of those things. I get what you're saying, but for me, it's it's it, it's a more realistic in in knowing that everything has to come to an end. And as a person, like for me, I would have loved to have the show go on as what as it was because I was having so much fun and I thought it was a good time. However, I think certain people were just kind of done with that part of their lives. And I, you see, I, so I'm not there yet. I love radio, and even though I'm, I, you know, I'm at 16 stations, I'm still very passionate about what I do. But there might come a time, five years, ten years down the line, where I'm like, you know what? I'm done with this part of my life. I need to move on to see what else is out there. I think 
some people came to that conclusion and they just had to move move on, you know. And then, uh, unfortunately, well, look, you're you're talking about Bean. You're you're talking about Bean, and that Bean. Bean was self-aware. Bean knew that he was ready to do something else, yeah. right? I mean, I think that was clear. He knew that K-Rock wasn't going in the direction that would make him happy. And he had the luxury of leaving to go find something that would make him happy. Right. And he, I think he wanted to stay in audio. It, it, it's what he does. It, oh, yeah. It's what he's, he's, in, he's insanely talented yeah. at. There, there's no one better. Yeah. But, um, so... I think that it's – so on one hand, yeah, they're, they're all great shows. They're all entertaining to listen to. I've listened we to We forgot to mention the, the Ralph Report, by the way. That's I no, mean, no I, 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 well, I mentioned that. That's the fir- very first show I mentioned. Oh. I don't think <laughs> yeah, you mentioned yeah, yeah, uh, the show with Ali overseas. Did, did you <laughs> I, mention that? Uh, I, I forgot to mention that one. And well, are you <laughs> listening to the same podcast that we are? <laughs> you knew that Kevin went to KLOS, right? Did you what? Did you shout that out with Sluggo? I did not hear that. <laughs> huh, that's I'm weird. Gonna, I'm going to go back to The only uh, podcast I didn't Clubhouse mention here. was uh, our podcast. Because <laughs> nobody cares about <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a YouTube uh, show called Great News with uh, Kevin Ryder and Mr. Mike Catherwood. I can't get past the lighting. I can't get past the lighting. <laughs> Leave it to something technical. Yeah, totally. That lighting will totally just I, shun something so, because I so the first <laughs> when you when you launch it. So Omar, I Listen, pull up to your house. I know what he's in. I, 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 I know what he's going to say. Go ahead. Oh, do you? I pull up to your house in a beautiful Corvette with three wheels. Yeah. Right, and it's dragging. It's dragging one of the rotors in the asphalt, leaving a scar in the road. Yeah. And I go, oh, here's your new car, and you're like. Well, it's mostly cool, <laughs> yeah. But I'm not. Can you can you fix it? I'm like, no. Just, you can get it fixed. You're like, listen, I, it's, listen. It's great. They you know, didn't like, hit the ground running. If that's what you're saying, <laughs> you not know? at all. They, they, they were, were dragging they were, the rotor in the asphalt. <laughs> yeah, they they were doing that. <laughs> However, uh, give it a. I, I, and I tell I told Janky Town listeners last episode, give it a shot now. Now it's it, they have uh, like little Chiron images now, and the mm-hmm. audio's fixed. And uh, I'm not sure about the lighting because I really didn't pay attention to that. But so far, so good. I'm way into it. So Man. what you're saying is now it's it's finally listenable. It's finally it's finally okay. they, they got it. They finally got in their groove. And uh, I, yeah, I, Look, I, I definitely busted check it out. Kevin on this. Like I have been. I, I I go yeah. Oh, of course, man. I texted him. I'm like, like, hey, nice audio, buddy. <laughs> what you do know? you say? What do you say? And he's like, yeah, we're getting it fixed. You know, oh. and I'm like, hey, how about those? How's how's that uh, red lighting on your on your head doing there, buddy? You know, <laughs> I love that you're calling him out on that. It's unbelievable. There's a time that I wouldn't have done that obviously but now i'm yeah. like well, i don't care no for you know? sure hey uh tell me a little bit about your thoughts on kevin and sluggo on klos because i had a chance to listen to their first couple of breaks because i just happened coincidentally i was driving around at the same time that they premiered and i thought their chemistry on those first couple of breaks were great but have you had a chance to listen to more of it yes yes oh, i have me, luckily I, I i had to go to an appointment the other day and i was in the car at around five o'clock and I listened to – I was in the traffic. I, I think I listened to like 90 minutes worth. Now, I can't stand – I'll get what I can't stand out of the way first. Okay. I can't KLOS, stand the KLOS color of the, the studio commercials. curtains. No, no, no. I, well, they don't have video. I can't stand <laughs> – KLOS has got to stop with the whole seven-minute breaks full of commercials. Like that's not cool in today's age. They have to do like K-Rock's two-minute promise or whatever, right? Right. Like uh, where it's only two minutes of break. I can't sit through seven minutes and then – a stairway to heaven and a Guns N' Roses, you know, tune waiting for another bit for, for, from Kevin and, and Sluggo. Having said that, yeah. having said that, their chemistry is amazing. Great. It's really, really good. Um, and Sluggo is every bit as good as he ever was. Ke- oh, I've said this oh, many, many so times good. that Kevin is, uh, that Sluggo is incredibly witty, but he's a master on the control board, which doesn't yep. mean anything that you listening at home, but you you win your ears win because Sluggo is so talented when it comes to audio. He's a master on the control flawless. board, and and it, flawless. And he understands what a morning show so, should sound like, and he's reproducing that. Um, we're, we're hearing it. The, you know that his he's passionate about radio. Like Sluggo loves radio more than anything. Yeah, and it shows. And he's he's witty. Uh, I, I yes, I'm a fan. So so they're doing a a proper morning show like show in the afternoon. Yes, they are. Yes, they're taking. I yeah, did not know that. Calls, I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be like a music heavy. You know, like uh, no, dude. They've already tried to call like Sam the Armenian comedian. Really? Which, by the way, I think we're supposed to call here shortly. We will. Yeah. Um, no, we're not. Yeah. <laughs> hey, how dare you? 
If I'm on the show, we will. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, I just gave I just gave uh, Kevin uh, I just gave Kevin uh, Doto's number. Oh, and, nice. Uh, yeah, so that'll happen. Oh, but yeah, to answer great. your question, they are doing a a morning show esque afternoon show. Yeah. Let me let me ask you: Have you had a chance to listen to Mike Catherwood's podcast? Uh, Mikey likes you, or are you into that fitness type of a uh, podcast, or is that not up your alley? I did listen to it, and to and it's not my cup of tea. Right. I think Mike is amazing and a phenomenal he host. Yes. I'm a, I'm a big Mike Catherwood <clears throat> fan. Yeah. But it's just not my thing. Cool. I think that's it, right? And, and no it, different than it's. By the way, it's no it's no different than than Mike probably doesn't listen to the Truck Show podcast. No, of course, of course, you it's know? the same. Yeah. Uh, do you listen to Adam? He was, yeah, yeah. I have, I have, uh, and he has. You know, once he aligned himself with Fox, and th- that's when he knew. I what I'm curious, honestly, as as a guy who used to hang out with Adam and Jimmy, yeah, a lot. I'm curious what their relationship looks like personally now. I, I truly don't know. I'm embarrassed to say I don't know because I I would have loved I I screwed up badly in when Jimmy left. Jimmy offered me a very very low level position which I kind of passed up. He didn't say you can have it. He said, "Look, I will put you in touch with the right people to potentially work at the Man Show." Or this is very early on, or maybe even when when Ben Stein's money. Mm-hmm. And like an idiot, I thought, "Man, I don't." He's like, "You should go into video editing. You're really good at video and audio. Like all, you know, I can put in a good word. Can't get your job, but I can I can get you in the door at least, right? It's your job to lose, right? Right. And um. I said, ah, oh, man, I don't want to sit in a darkened room and just edit all day. Duh. And, and by the way, did for the next 20 freaking years let, is sit in a dark room editing all day. Let me day. stop you right there. For any kind of, uh, you know, jankster out there that is, is younger than 30 years old, take it from us. If you get an opportunity like this, you jump on it. Because if you're good at what you do, you will move up and you will move up quickly. Well, yeah, but but I guess what I was taking a very roundabout way of saying it, had I taken that, I would have, Jimmy has a really super tight circle of friends inner circle and i did maintain a a a relationship with jimmy but over the years it's just gone farther and farther apart like it does with like a cousin or whatever you know when you're kids you all play together and stuff and then as you get older you you go different ways anyway that i'm curious to see what happened between jim and and, uh, because they have very different political points of view right yeah polar opposite but but also um, they they still have to be friends i mean i would assume so yeah i would assume so but that we yeah, I don't know. I, I I have friends that I have different different political views with, and we try to you know. But the difference leave, is, but the difference, Muggs, is that they're both they're this, very. Yeah, that's true. They're both very public Spotlight. about it. I mean, Jimmy, right. Right. Jimmy was on Trump's radar, right? And, right? and and Adam is is on the hit list for for the the you know the other side, the liberal side. So, but I think what Adam did is he you know he he knew what he was doing. Like Adam is very calculated. I thought, and, yeah, and very shrewd. A lot of it is like he's just trolling people. Like he's a little too over the top, don't you I think? I don't think so. You don't? No, really? I think he's pissed off. I think really? I think Adam is every bit as Mr. Burcham as Mr. Burcham was the woodshop teacher okay. uh, that he played on uh, doing when he did uh, stand-up comedy. And then when yeah. we found him, uh, you know, he brought it into K-Rock and he was Mr. Burcham. Oh, man, Burch just, after wood. So yeah. many people didn't know that. And um, <laughs> That's so true. Everyone's, they all thought it was Mr. Bertram, like T-R-U-M, <laughs> Bertram. And I'm like, no, it's Burcham. It's like Birch, like the wood. They're like, yeah. oh, I get that. Oh, man. So, Mr. Um, Mr. Cedarling didn't have quite the ring. Yeah, exactly right. So uh, he's gone. You know, Adam is the self-made man. You know, Adam yeah. was like borderline homeless. Yeah, as a as a as a, a teen and, or in his early twenties. And Jimmy taught was, Adam how to read, right? He, he's still dyslexic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he uh, Adam is a rags to riches guy. He really is. N- Adam owes nothing to anyone except for Jimmy. Except for Jimmy. Without Jimmy. Adam may have had the same trajectory to start him, but it might have taken longer right? or it taken a different route. So Adam worked hard. And it's interesting that that, that path that he took being the voice of conservatives. Um, and he knew that those people, A, it pays. Like it's, it's no joke. Like when you're the voice of – if you're the voice of conservatism, there's a lot of money that gets attached to that. Uh, I think, and I think on the other side, if you're the voice of uh, liberals, it's not, it doesn't have that, uh, um, your audience is different. Mm. And I don't think you, there's as much money to be made on that side of the equation right. I, I, as far as like public speaking goes. Right. Um, speaking of Adam, a lot of people always hit us up 
because Adam is the guy or one of the people behind the K Rock documentary that we were promised, and it seemed like or seems like yeah, it's, what it's supposed to be be out now or what? what, what so yeah, happened what, to that? Do you have any idea? Because I know you had a lot yeah, to do behind do. the scenes. I do. I do. <laughs> I mean, did you hear sucks. the deflation in your voice? It sucks. Yeah, I do. Uh, this doesn't I sound really, good. Right? I lied to a lot of people unknowingly. Oh, like, what happened? I, I'm oh, meeting, no. No, no, no. I, when I say I lied, I was right. telling the God's honest truth. Like oh, people right. were saying, because I, I booked, I think, all but one guest of the 90 guests that were in no that. No way. That, oh, like Bono like some, and Robert God. Smith and all those people? Yes. What? Yes. Oh, yes. oh my God. Yes. Wow. I didn't know that. When I was moonlighting, I would be sitting in my office next to the Red Bull Sound Space. Right. And I was working for... Technically, CBS New York. At some point, they transferred my paycheck from L.A. to the, the mothership of, of CBS New York. Yeah, you're a corporate and, man. <laughs> um, and I was a corporate dude. Yeah. yeah but the, 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 it did allow me some, some wiggle room. I was able to do some stuff on the side that he didn't know about. And yeah. one of them was uh, uh, one of them was this documentary. And so N- Nate Adams, who is the director uh, for all of – I think all of Adams' documentaries – and um, so I, I was booking the guests and uh, the interviewees and Nate was directing and he was hiring the crew and Adam was bankrolling everything. And we have hundreds of hours of footage from the dawn of K-Rock when it was in a hotel room to wow. its greatest and everyone saying good things and then also talking a lot of, you know, not even, I was going to say smack, that's not true, saying what really happened, the cocaine usage, the, oh, the, the people payola. that got fired, the, the payola, right. like uh, all of it. it all is those legit. stories I totally want to hear. Know. And, and I know. listen, I was only part of that for, you know, maybe like 19 years, but those were like the lame 19 years. I didn't, I wasn't there <laughs> no. for any of the good stuff. <laughs> no, you were like me. You were there for the cocaine. That up. Hold on. No, oh, I on. wasn't. I, write that down. I wish I was. <laughs> no. Hold on. I'm writing down lame 90s. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll get, we'll get back to that in a, re- in a minute and I'll tell you why okay so what happened is that we shot all this stuff and before they spent all the money editing it because nate would hire independent editors at that time i think now uh philly pop or whatever the production company that nate and adam own together um, they have their own staff but anyway they said let's go out and sell it to a netflix an apple a youtube red a somebody right or abc or hulu, hulu whoever it was Let's go get some money, and that will pay for the distribution. That's all where it is, is getting money to pay this big distribution deal. And they they haven't got it, and they've been shopping, oh from what I understand, this whole time. Now, wow. I don't know if K-Rock taking a, a turn for the worse is, um, is, is makes his job any easier because – had they tried to sell this documentary when K Rock was getting like a four or a five share, like massive in LA, and there was this huge juggernaut, and Kevin and Bean are still on the air, and the biggest morning show, it's a it's a lot easier sell. Now it's taken a turn. The only I I think you're in this weird period where, to me, they're out trying to sell this thing. That's like, why do people care about hey, K Rock? Um, I heard, and, 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 and uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I heard they went and reshot some stuff or or shot more stuff. To include that, like to to make it like, you know, here's a station that was, you know, on the top and now it's kind of like, you know, uh, going on the uh, decline. Yeah, uh, um, a little bit. But I think I think that would probably be shot as soon as they inked a deal with a distributor with a Netflix oh, or something like that. That makes sense. And I thought it would be a no brainer because if you look at all the music docs that are on your Netflix and Hulus and all that stuff, um, the music documentaries, I thought this would be real. If you're into music, you would watch this because yeah. you're Gwen Stefani's and you're... See you later. Sorry, saying goodbye to my coworkers. Um, oh. if, you, um, if you're into Bono, you too, and you're into Coldplay and you're into Rob Zombie and you're into like whatever it is, we have all those people. All those people are on camera saying right. crazy stuff. That's really, insane really cool. to me, man. Very complimentary. Yeah. You know, talking to, you know, uh, getting the story from Tom Morello, how like he hated K-Rock in the beginning. You wow. know, how like it was, it was enemy number one. What? Right? And how they came to, oh yeah. Because it was commercial when radio edited, or? No. When or? we edited, when we took oh, the, the, the F-bombs out of K- Killing in the Name. Yeah. Zach was pissed. Wow. Zach De La Roca was livid. That we just took, for editing out the the, the we fucks? took the fangs out of that song. We defanged uh, that yeah. song by taking the f bombs out of it. And he's like, "How dare you? 
That's so insane. that was ultimately how they remember how they got back at us at Acoustic Christmas that year. What? Zach De La Roca brought either it was someone from the from the the side stage or from the audience, whatever. And basically it was dry humping this chick on stage. Oh man. And um, we're like, dear God, what's happening right now? What's happening? And he was just, I don't know what was going on, but like it was, there was, a, they were trying to get back at us, you know, oh, my uh, Lord. For, for doing that. Even though they're playing our show, I think they were strong armed into playing acoustic Christmas. I, I'm sure that whoever the PD was at that time, Weatherby or, or, or Andy Schoen prior to that, like, but that was interesting. Anyway, so we had Tom Morello telling these stories. So there's all this really amazing stuff, the, all these stories oh, that all of these artists have told. And I thought this would have been, and all I cared about is my deal with Nate was all I want is to say, you know, associate producer, you don't have to pay me a cent. All these hundreds of hours that I worked yeah. booking this stuff, I go, Nate, you keep, I don't want any part of the deal. Just say, you know, some when the scroll goes up and I'm on my deathbed, I can show my kids my name goes by in the in the you know in the titles or something. Uh, you know, <sighs> even you just talking about this is giving me goosebumps. I cannot believe that they're having problems selling or marketing this thing. Do you you're, you have a you know background in marketing and promotion? Do you see any way that this is going to be able to come out without anybody buying it? I mean, on VOD maybe or something or. Adam's Adam wants to recoup his money. You know, Adam's okay, got right. hundreds of thousands of dollars into this so far. And you know, because we were hiring, I wasn't, but his team was hiring top-notch cinematographers, ADs, um the whole thing like to shoot this stuff. Right. And uh DPs and whatnot and and that's director of photography, Muggo. And <laughs> oh. So he was hiring these crews, spending money and um, and he's got to recoup that. So I don't think he's going to let it see the light of day until he's got a yeah. a clear path to a payday, or e- at least breaking even. In in my mind, wow. And, you know, they're not going to go like old school. They just put it on a DVD because that doesn't exist anymore, right. right? Or any kind of a pay per view or whatever. You put it on a you you go to Netflix and they say we'll give you a million dollars for the first three months, and then every every you know we'll give you one penny per play, whatever the deal. I don't know how that stuff works, but yeah. Something like that will have to happen, and I, right now I got—I don't know that. To me, the only big sales pitch is K Rock flips formats and goes to sports radio. Wow, yeah. And now you've got, and now that now that final chapter has been written, and you go to someone like Netflix or whoever or Hulu and say, "Here's, I am going to give you the entire lifespan of the greatest rock station on the planet, arguably, and from its beginning." To its end, from birth to death, and I've already got it shot, and I have, and here are all the people that are in it. And when you roll out that giant Dead Sea Scrolls of all the names that are in it, as as some as the ta- as the as the whoever that is the, uh, the 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 purchaser of that content at Netflix, I think at that point you go, this is I we have to take this right. Yeah. But until that final chapter has been has been written, how do you tell that story? It just blows my mind because you see that roster of artists. You would think that that would sell itself, wouldn't you? You would, you would. But like I said, I just think that they're they're into storytelling. Okay, they're these are all very talented people, and they understand it. I don't know. I'm right. ge- this is again yeah, me guessing. No, totally, I, I, totally. Nate, we you should you actually you should talk to Nate. I can line him up. He would, oh, that'd he be would great. Be happy to talk to. That him. would be amazing. And he he may he may parrot some of the same things I'm saying, okay. or maybe maybe I'm full of shit and okay. I have no idea. So I, f- I don't know. So for now, it's probably it's on the shelf somewhere, and hopefully. Fingers crossed, it'll see the light of day some day soon. Yeah, I okay. wish that um, I the I showed the we made a trailer like an eight minute trailer, I think it was eight minutes, six or eight minutes. Oh, I remember. I, I didn't. To, I didn't see it. I remember you showed it to like Kevin and Bean and a, a couple of people, like maybe Weatherly, and mm-hmm. people were like blown yeah. away by it. I showed it to Nicole Alvarez, mm-hmm. and she cried. Wow, she like literally wept. Now she's an emotional person, but I'm telling you. She's like, light, I can't. She was covering her face. So that's why I'm making this weird noise. She's like, I can't. I can't be even, like, this is crazy. And then I showed it to Dr. Drew, and he's like, you, you guys nailed it. Like, this is it. Yeah. Like, you nailed it. This is not one, one person's story or someone else's story. It's not, the, it's not the story of Poor Man or Kevin and Bean, or, or it's the story of K-Rock, a radio station that should have never been successful that was. Yeah, and it's one of those cool things that we're in that club. I mean, even though we were behind-the-scenes people, we are still in that 
K Rock Club, and that club is really, really small compared to other radio stations yeah. with massive staffs that were designed to succeed. And how this station succeeded, it is, it is a great story. Well, hopefully, it will come to light really soon. Uh, speaking of, it was a victim of its own success. I mean, ultimately, that right. that that was the deal. It, had it not been popular. Who knows what would have happened? It, it, just, it, it just kept getting sold and sold and sold yeah. into bigger companies. I want to circle back really quick okay. on something you said about the uh, – you, know, you said you know, it was lame when I was there. You went through, I'm guessing, I started, some of what I did. I started 2000. Uh, the, the last couple of months of 99 okay. and 2000. Yeah, 2000. Okay. And I was – you know, Yeah, go ahead. Do you know what the biggest – so the year with the biggest ratings was? Oh, if I were to guess, the year with the biggest ratings was probably 2003 with the Limp Bizkit oh, Corn Days. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's, that, uh, yeah, that's, that, that, I'm, I believe that's accurate. Yeah. So the reason I bring that up is through the 90s when we were, had that, you know, when I joined with Kevin and Bean, I believe they were 22nd in the ratings. Okay. So we were at the very, very bottom, you know, there's. Who knows how many radio stations in L.A. there are, but we were at the very bottom. And by the late 90s, we were like close to number one, and you crossed over into 2000, 2003. It was the number one morning show in the K-Rock. The whole radio station was massive. But I was so hunkered down like you, so focused on Kevin and Bean and K-Rock in general, obsessively. Yeah. And I mean like, like problem, like it was my drug that I didn't see what was going on. My friends all around me were using my name, like Bald Brad and, and Van Drivers, uh. Jeremy, and all these other guys were saying that they were lightning, <laughs> yeah. and they were getting in clubs and eating free at restaurants. <laughs> I got, I got and a funny story about Snow that. Summit for, so they're doing all these things, Omar. Yeah. And, and I can't, first of all, I'm, I'm pissed because they're saying it's me. Yeah. <laughs> but then it's also, I understand it's funny. Yeah. So right, I, they, they get a pass because it, it is hilarious, yeah. right? Because why would you impersonate? I'm a dumbass. Like, why would you? Well, you would say that you're Kevin or Bean. And yeah. they'd always say, like, everyone knows what Kevin and Bean look like. They don't know what lightning looks like. Yeah. And, and, that's, and that was true. But in that time, um, I didn't realize how big, how important the radio station was. I had no freaking clue. It's because you were on the and inside. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't going, I wasn't going to clubs trying to get in for free. I, all I cared about, this is, here we go back with automotive. If I got a, a discount on a set of tires or I was getting parts for my Honda Accord, I was stoked. Or I was getting a free helmet and stuff. You know, do you remember that? You remember when they gave all my crap away yeah, on the air? Yeah, yeah. So um, that's all I cared about. And, and that and success and, and ratings and making Kevin and Bean, the, uh, they, all I cared about was making them the stars they thought they should be or, you know, or, or they, they deserve to be. That's all I cared about. And so now I look back and I have no fo- – every single photograph you see, which I have a whole hard drive full of photos of them, mm-hmm. I don't um, – I'm not in any of them. I'm, the I'm exact always holding same the camera. Way. I, am the, I was always the exact way. Yeah. Yeah. Because I wish my I was kids go – my kids are like, hey, did you meet so-and-so? I'm like, yeah. They go, do you have a picture? I'm like, no. Well, see this picture of Schwarzenegger? I'm holding the camera. Well, yeah. how do I know that? <laughs> I don't know. you got to believe me. How about the picture with Charlize Theron? Well, I'm holding the camera. You know, it's like they it's like I'm not I'm not in him. Yeah. And it's like and I had a policy back in the 90s and I, I think it, it extended into the 2000s. And um, I don't know what happened when Alex got the, the gig, but I said no photographs with the with the talent unless you are Kevin and Bean, because I wanted all the guests to come in and feel comfortable like you could have Charlize Theron come in in her sweatpants and know that weren't going to be cameras on her. She could just hang out, drink coffee you know, or a slushie and, uh, and, 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 and hang out with Kevin and Bean and just shoot the shit. And um, I think that was successful because we weren't star hounding anyone, right? Yeah. But consequently, I don't have a photograph with anybody uh, except for Vern Troyer and maybe Don <laughs> King. Like both – is Don King still Only alive? Only two that matter. He's still alive. He's still uh, alive. Don dead, right? still alive. Yeah. No, he's oh, still alive. Okay. Yeah, Vern Troyer is Troyer's gone. He's yeah. no longer with us. Yeah. So like I have so few photos to, to show anything to my kids. But uh, – Anyway, I, I miss the 90s. Like, I didn't, I was so obsessed. And so I, it's not me boohooing. Like, I had a great time. Right. But looking back, I didn't take advantage of any of those opportunities for being, quote unquote, uh, lightning but, on but, K-Rock. But also, the morning weren't show. you young? Weren't you 21, 22? I was a freaking idiot. Yeah. Like, yeah, I was young. Yeah, that's and how I realized I, now how insanely immature I was. You were 21 when you started? I, well, I was, I turned 21 
at the radio wow. station. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, he was super young, super young. Hey, by the way, you grew uh, up there, dude. It's, it's so yeah. funny because yeah. I did, I did uh, very similar to what Lightning just described. I would, I would, I was running the board, and we had like Smashing Pumpkins, in, and we had uh, Dave Gahan in, and I would never go and take a picture. But they would come in, and Kevin. This was when Bean was already doing it remotely. So Kevin would step out to the other side of the uh, console, and they would snap a picture, and I would just you know keep my head down and be you know polite and that was it that that that's what i was there for and you know i kept it uh, it's very funny that you say that dave gahan i was i we, we all well i say we this group on 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 this podcast we are depeche mode well, i don't know muggos are you a depeche mode yeah, fan absolutely okay yeah i mean depeche mode in the late in the 80s and the early 90s was the biggest band in the world yeah and and here's dave gahan and martin gore sitting across literally from as close as I am to this monitor right here. I mean, I could touch his nose if I wanted with my fingertip. Yeah. And um, I, I, I just, I, all I can do is listen back to some of those interviews and go, well, I was in the room. And in some cases, I don't even, I don't even remember what I was doing or where I was. I'm like, I, I go, I, I must have been there because I recorded it. But it's just this weird, hey. I have no, it's that part sucks. Quick, yeah, quick Dave Gahan story. So uh, I was running the board. I had been answering phones at K-Rock for maybe a year and a half. I auditioned for the Kevin Bean board opposition. I got it. And about three weeks in, Dave Gahan comes in. I think he was promoting Exciter. I'm, I, I forget. And everybody in the room leaves. Dave Gahan is sipping coffee. And I'm super nervous. And the, the interview is done. And he kind of like, you know, sees me like I'm looking up. And he sees that I'm like tense up. He's like, Hey, uh, you want a picture? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> he had mercy. <laughs> he had mercy on you. <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. And I still have it. And uh, Oh, my God. Uh, I might have it somewhere. No, I don't. It's, uh, it's upstairs. Yeah. But he's wearing a shirt that says, fuck you, you fuckity fuck. And it's awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, was that awesome. the shirt that was, um, that was, it wasn't the uh, the Johnny Cash shirt, right? No, 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 no. This one, it, okay. it just said, F-U, you f it f man. Yeah, it was it yeah. was awesome. Yeah, one of the best, best, best times ever. It was Dude, best I times remember ever. sitting in the studio when Dave Gahan is talking about using heroin. You know, like this is oh, before, wow. way before Exciter. Yeah. When he's coming clean. And we had a lot of interviews. I'll never forget the guy that came in and accused Courtney Love of killing, you know, uh, Kurt, like that was, oh I was like, my God. I, I, that was one of those moments where I'm, I'm behind the console sitting behind oh, Kevin man. and here's this guy that's, I don't remember his cockamamie story, whatever it was, but he really truly, he had written a book about how Courtney had plotted the murder of, of Kurt Cobain and, um, and I was listening, I'm standing there having this weird out of body experience going, I know right now that there are hundreds of thousands of people listening to this interview because we had teased it. And it was, of course, at like a prime hour, this late 7 o'clock, 7.50 or whatever it was. Everyone's on the way to work. And here's this guy accusing Courtney Love, who, who had a hole at the time with like it – was, it was she was having massive success, accusing the world's favorite you know, singer, Kurt Cobain, uh, of you – know, she, she's accusing him of – whatever. He's accusing her of murder. And I'm thinking – and I look out the window – we're on the ninth floor of our Burbank building, and I look down at the 134 freeway that travels through Burbank, and I go, every third car down there has got to be listening to this because yeah. he's accusing this woman of murder. It's this crazy thing I'm going, and I felt like the whole, like, I don't know, it was this weird experience that I was having that I knew everyone was listening. Normally, you didn't pay attention to anyone listening. But this guy was saying something that was so inflammatory right? Um, that that I knew... I don't know why I remember that moment, but like I'm just going. He's accusing this woman of murder on the air of all, and everyone we everyone that was listening to K Rock was a Nirvana fan at that time. I don't know. It was just weird. Maybe That's I'm not doing the story justice. No, but no, I was no, no, I had, no. I had a, I, Everybody I has had a really weird experience. Everybody has it, those moments working at K Rock where you think like, wow. I am witnessing history right now, and you kind of like that's get, what it was. Yeah, you you, you get that's blown what it was. Yes, yeah, you get blown away I in the moment. Just said it like that. <laughs> <laughs> I witnessed history. Boom, and that was it. Yeah, yeah. I should have just said that. No, but I, I understand my totally. fucking long winded stories. <laughs> God damn it! No, but I, I I totally get what you mean because there have been those times and those moments are just cemented in your brain and they might not, mm. I mean, they're definitely meaningless to, uh, uh, you know, the, the, like the Kevin and beans of the world because they have so many, but for you particularly that for some reason, it just stuck with you. And I, I totally get what you're saying, man. That, yeah. That, that's crazy. So can I also tell you something that I, I had admitted I've, I've told my wife and my kids, but I don't think that they, 
I, I don't think they either understand or... Um, are you coming out of the closet? Lightning, you're coming out? No. No, no, no. <laughs> it's like the dramatic pause when I reveal something. I, oh, I, like, I, like, I like that Muggs and I, we both jumped to you coming out. Because <laughs> we all think the same way. I yeah. would have said the same thing. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. And if I had a drum roll, I would have yeah, played it. Yeah, uh, 100%. <laughs> the rim, rim shot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have PTSD because of it, that happened in that, in that room at Burbank. Like legitimate once a week for my, for, for since... To this day, to like, I think like probably last, this last Monday night, I woke up in a cold sweat with PTSD from that studio, pulling carts off the wall, putting them in the cart oh, machine, man. and nothing plays. And I'm pulling every cart oh off the God. wall, and nothing oh. plays. And I'm putting CD and CD after, oh. and, I'm, and there's no Kevin and me, and it's just me there. And they're You're on like remote somewhere. Best of, or a remote. And I'm, oh, man. No, they're a remote, and I'm turning up every pot. There's no audio. There's, and eventually, I just have to, my, where my dream ends every single time, it's when I have to turn the mic on and I have to talk and tell L.A. that I have nothing to play. Oh, my Lord. And it's awful. And I'm wow. telling you, it sounds funny. Because if I'm in your seat listening to me tell the story, it's no, hilarious. No, it does not sound funny you, to I me. I wake up no. once a week in this yeah. god-awful sweat. And I'm pulling, yeah. I'm frantic, and, you know. And I realize that PTSD is a real thing for, for many people yeah. who have seen war. I'm not pretending to say that. Don't be silly. What I'm saying is for me... I that's I legit wake up because I I would get so stressed, you know. I think I've also told. Well, we'll save this for another podcast when you're. You yeah, know, well, another, we're going to have you on again for sure. Like, and I have another know. time when Jimmy had to. I was like almost suicidal, and and Jimmy had to come over. My wife called Jimmy and and came over and like talked me down. It was really. Oh awful. yeah, I've like, heard that really, story. Yeah. Okay, oh. so maybe I've told that before. Yeah. But, no, um, no. Personally, personally, I haven't I don't heard think it. You've told yeah, I have listeners. Heard it. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's gnarly. Awful. We'll save that for another podcast if you if you have me back on. But no, uh, absolutely, and we will because man, we just uh, so far you know we've been recording for an hour and it's only seemed like you know it's been like ten minutes because of all the great stories and all the reminiscing and I love all the nostalgia that's building up in me. It makes me feel good right now. So good. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask you about um, the Soleil Moonfry on Netflix. Uh, show it's it was called something in the nineties or here's the nineties. What is it kid, called? Kid in the nineties, right? Kid in the nineties. That yeah, that's it. That's what it is. And you popped up in the documentary. Isn't that weird? I mean, let's be honest. It was for one second, but I still, think it was like two two seconds. By the way, whatever. I just on you the get si- residuals. <laughs> on, on a side note, I don't know if you thought the same thing, but when you uh, screen capped it and you put it up on your social media, I thought, what the hell is Gavin running the board on at, at K Rock? What, Gavin, as in, oh my kid, your kid, well, yeah, I, know, really? I, I thought so, yeah. I think, man, he, Be- because he looks so I'm much so young. You're or what? so young, yeah. You were so young, yeah, totally. Um, so th- yeah, I mean, the first person to hit me was was our friend Cody Black, who still works at the station, yeah, in the internet's department, and um, he sent it to me. I'm like, what? It what? Oh, I really? didn't remember that. All I recalled. He's like, hey, I saw you on TV in the Slay Moon Fry documentary. And as if it was like no big deal. And I go, yeah. what, are you t- what are you even talking about? <laughs> and um, so, yeah, we have Hulu. So I, I watched it. And I had to skim through it like five times before I found myself. Because it was like, so quick. He's totally lying. Like, <laughs> it totally pulled my leg. And then I found it. And it's part of, so it's, I see Adam Carolla. <laughs> ah, we got Slay Moon Fry in here to talk about addictions. And then she pans oh. over. It's Slay Moon Fry. She shot her childhood with her own video camera. Mm-hmm. And that you follow her through through her, her growing up and her breast augmentation or reduction, I should say, and all that stuff. And um, everybody used to have her... Well, anyway, we won't talk about Slay Moon Fry, but... Just really quick, though, a, I, I will say I saw the first 10 minutes because I had to move on and do something else. It is very good from the first 10 minutes that I saw. It's so, great. So, yeah, if you guys want to peep that out, yeah. Yeah, it's entertaining. Yeah. If, you, if you have Hulu, I mean, especially it's free, so Especially it. if you grew up in the 90s because all those stars and all the, uh, all the clothes and everything, it's very nostalgic feeling, yeah. Yeah, for sure. But anyway, so they were. Yeah. She was shooting, and apparently, just pans over to me, and there's my dumbass <laughs> behind the board, you know, looking looking down as I as I always do, and you know, I'm Ugh. studying the board, making sure I get everything yeah. right. And uh, if, that's what if I, I could about. guess, if I could guess, it was pr- it was probably not even a full second. It was probably like point three seconds or point four seconds. Even, again, it's, <laughs> she pans over, she sees this dude with curly, you know, blonde locks, and she pans back, and that's it. You know, I had to freeze frame it. 
But it was wow. it was long okay. enough for me to freeze frame. I haven't, on, I haven't Apple seen TV. it yet, but I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm, so. I'm going to watch it. Uh, one, uh, the final question for me before we move on to uh, the best thing on this uh, podcast episode is: if there's one thing, and I know I'm going to put you in a tough position here, if there's one thing that you miss the most from the days at K Rock and Kevin Bean. What is that thing? Is there a thing? Can you pinpoint it? Is it is it like going to the Weenie Rose Acoustic Christmas? Um, you know, the double December pageants, working with somebody? I mean, you know, uh, can, can you... Are there too many things? Mm. Sam, the Armenian comedian. No, I love that, <laughs> but... <laughs> I don't know. Like, yeah, I, I as much as I love my live music and events and and all those things were wonderful and the Christmas albums and and were 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 hellacious to put together if, as you and I have yeah. talked about before. Um, I just think the magic that that we created. That's what I look most fondly upon is the days in Burbank. And for whatever reason, although the studio was technically nicer. In when we moved to LA, oh, on I Venice. agree. I agree with you one hundred percent. The Burbank Studios building, had some sort of magic about it. It was some magic dump. It was some, a dump. I don't know if it was the uh, the 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 Coke residue and the uh, the faders <laughs> on the control board or what it was, <laughs> or, like, or it, it was, was the loogies on top of Studio C that. Uh, Are you that, serious? That Big Mama the hopped Man up there. Shot? You know, oh, Big was, Mama, was, oh, Big Mama, Big Mama, Mama. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, and, Such um, a rank radio station. <laughs> I just think like s- sitting, I just have so many fond memories of sitting behind Kevin as I had my bench in the back of the studio and it was a bench that went the, the length or the, the width of the studio and I'm, you know, I'm four feet from him and I'm just staring at his back all morning for five and a half hours. But just the, we, I laughed out loud with my headphones on in real time with listeners in their cars for 20 years you know and um those are the memories that i when when adam would come in and, and do mr Burcham, where you know he he would talk he would flash back to his his you know his his uh, uh vietnam era you know self and uh, i come back to this country and they kill, call me a baby killer you know like all that stuff yeah and we would all i would look at bean and bean would be laughing and cr- crying laughing yeah. kevin couldn't catch his breath and we're all those that that is that's it for me yeah. That's it for me. It's not like events or concerts or any That's of that great. crap. It's really the magic that happened in that studio that I got to be part of every day. Yeah. And sometimes it sucked massive donkey balls. But I would tell the laughter and looking back and being able to tell these stories with you, that made it yeah. worthwhile. That's awesome. All right, let's let's uh, let's get to... Uh, and that's our show. No, that's let's our show. get on to uh, a man, bigger... I'm sorry. Bigger and... Uh, <laughs> man, if, if, if you're one of those few fans that... Oh, we're hey, going to get on to a bigger and better things here. Don't worry about who we're 747 calling. prefix? It is. <laughs> yes. Hello. What's up, Sam? It's Lightning and an Omar and Beer Mug. Hey, Omar. How you doing? <laughs> hey, Sam. What's happening, dude? How are you? I'm kicking the world, and I have a new joke for you guys. <laughs> oh, man. You're locked oh, and loaded. Let's Perfect. It. Let's hear it. Oh. I'm supposed to be Judge the Sam. Okay, it's cut a comic uh, video, you know. I'm supposed to be Judge the Sam. I went to my court building. I see lots of people. Oh, I go, this is really crazy. People are reacting on the on the court, you know. So I go to the uh, room and I ask the jury supervisor, who is my customers today? Oh, uh, uh, Speedy Gonzalez, Mickey Mouse, Donald Trump, and Joe Biden. I said, that's interesting. Moving in. I said, who's going to be first? Oh, Speedy Gonzalez, yo quiero comprar uh, Disneyland. Uh, hold on, hold on, says the lawyer of the Mickey Mouse. Hey, hey, that's Mickey Mouse. You can't touch that. And then Donald Trump uh, lawyer said, hey, hey, hold on. Uh, I built the wall for you guys. Oh, then the judge of the, I mean, the whole name, oh, they said Joe Biden, lawyer said he, Joe Biden is here to tear it apart. Oh, give me a better case dismiss. Get the hell out of here of my office. All right, Sam, go ahead and tell the joke. That's the joke. Huh. 
let's get into the show, guys. Come on. That was <laughs> awesome. Hey, hey, Sam, are you still there? Yeah. Is, okay, Sam, what are you watching on television right now? Murder, she wrote? <laughs> Murder, she wrote. How are you, Kevin? I'm great. <laughs> Kevin's great. He's got uh, Oy, Sam, Kevin. Sam, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin talk now? about uh, yeah, Kevin. Talk yeah. about the uh, your new show with Sluggo on KLOS. Yeah, Sam. I don't know. I'm on KLOS now with uh, the Slug Monstrosity, and uh, we talk in and out of Motley Crue, uh, some Eagles, sometimes some stuff that K Rock used to play. Uh, you should call up someday. Oh, I'd like to give the number so I can call. Uh, uh, let me write it down. Okay. <laughs> it's it's, a, it's 818-955-KLOS. 818-955-KLOS. Oh, okay. I understand. Yes. Hey, and also, Sam, um, we've got some listeners that would enjoy speaking to you. What, what number should they dial? Oh, 747-296-296. 0528. Good. Uh, one, one more time. One more time, please. Area code 747 296 All right, Sam. Hey, right. and um, right. promise to pick up because the last couple of times Janky Town tried to call you, you didn't pick up, man. We we're very disappointed. Oh, when? Today? No, not today. This is a couple of weeks ago, or maybe <laughs> like a month ago. Oh, you know, why? You know Omar? what? You know what happened is I get new phones every six months because uh, I get free, you know. And then whenever I want to do information or see Ethiopian music and all that, they stop. So I get another one. So I change my number. That's the reason. Okay, okay. You got a lot of burners. Hey, got a lot of burners, Sam. Hey, Sam, uh, are you all vaxxed up? Did you get the vaccination? Are you good? I didn't get it yet. We are planning to have it because my wife, she's beautician and barber, and we have to get it sooner or later. Sooner or later? I think you should get it sooner, man. Yeah, dude, Sam, you smoke like a chimney. You, your lungs are not healthy. You need to get vaccinated. We need Sam forever. Yeah. I love you guys. You know what? I was devastated. Uh, all my work that I've done with you guys got wasted because it's now another person's uh, on K-Rock, uh, Striker, whatever, and they don't give a shit about me. And I'm saying, you know, all these people are, they're going to wonder if I'm alive or dead because I've been doing for with you guys three decades. Come on, give me a break. Isn't that amazing, Omar? Three uh, it freaking is, decades. It is ma- amazing. Uh, Sam, you don't think that people... I know people... L- listen, I don't think... I know people still love your body of work that you left behind. So don't just throw that away. You have a legacy that you left at K-Rock. Yes. And then also, I got two CD laid out, and I want to do breakfast show. I got restaurants all over them okay. waiting for me to do something. All right, Sam, here's here's what we're going to do, okay? Janky Town, we're going to do a special live show on episode 69, and we're going to have you do a live uh, performance for that special live broadcast. Well, I'm going to have to bring my band, Joe. He's a synthesizer, keyboard, excellent musician. That's that's fine. Bring whoever you need, man. We just want to make that magic happen for episode 69 of Janky Town. Good. And then I'm here to ease the people's minds, you know, what the children... Hey, Omar, I have just hang up now. We're done yeah. with him. Are we done? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, we're, okay. All right. All right. So bye, hey, Sam. Uh, did you ever see... <laughs> Um, did you just ever see, hang uh, up on him. <laughs> that's how you do it. I mean, that's how Kevin would do it. The best, though, when, when Sam, because Sam calls. That felt so good. Wait, wait. wait. I'm just me. saying, dude, that felt so good. Like, thank you for doing that. That felt so good. Yeah, yeah. So, oh so Sam, oh. Sam, Sam calls me once a week. And the way to do it, Mugs, is what, when Sam calls you, right in the middle of your word, you're like, hey, Sam, what do you, you hang up on yourself? Because then he assumes the line dropped. Awesome. That's the way it works. If right. you cut him off, then he'll know he was hung up on. But if you're <laughs> mid-sentence and you kill yourself, he'll just dial back, but, and then you don't have to pick up anymore. That's the way to do it, man. I love that. That's, that's so good, man. Well, Lightning, thank you so much for hopping on and uh, 
I will you'd not fill in just being a guest on Janky Town, dude. And we're going to definitely uh, have you on. And I, you know how we were talking about in the past, how we can, you know, have you on from time to time on Janky Town. I think uh, if we tell old K-Rock stories that people don't really know about, I think that would be the perfect thing because the, like the Jimmy, uh, you know, talking you down from the ledge story, I don't know about. I would love to hear all these great K-Rock stories and uh, yeah, maybe get Nate on the phone and, you know, uh, kind of like do that on a semi-regular basis if you'd be down for that. I'm down. I can okay. talk whatever, though. I mean, I'm not yeah. locked in. The, I'm not one of those guys like, it's 90s forever. No, know? no, no, no. But, for but sure. thank for you. Sure. I, I'm honored. Yeah, man. Yeah. We love that, dude. So thank you for uh, coming on down. And uh, yeah, say bye to the people. All right. Bye, James. Yeah, like. Appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> if you want more lightning at Truck Show Podcast. Uh, when you come back next time, Light, I have, I have a bone to pick with you. Oh, do you still want well, to do wait that? Wait a minute. We, so, we, wait, wait. It's time. Time out. Time out. Time out. I that forgot about that. Now? that. I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, do that now? You do that now. After wait, we wrap wait. it up? All right. Okay, wait, wait. Hold, on, hold, on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold okay. on. Let's get into the show. All right? Whoa! Oh, wait, wait. We, we haven't gotten into the show yet? <laughs> that was our intro. <laughs> that, was, that, was our pre, that was our pre-talk. Oh, wait. This Holy! Thing's, this, this thing's have a you not done your... Wait a minute, Omar. Have you not done your 85 minutes of print shop talk yet? <laughs> not yet, not yet, not yet. Uh, Dear wait God. a minute. Okay. That's really our intro, Omar? That's you know, a like, new you, you, record. That was pre-show. That was pre-show talk, man. Come that on, was you know pre-show? That's like two hours. That's how we roll, man. That's how we roll. <laughs> That's what? Insane. That means Then that means that the body of the show has got to be like 37 hours. <laughs> like it's, if it's in proportion. <laughs> All right. Do we just want to call it quits then? Is I that mean, what we want to do? I, that's no, why I no. kind of... Uh, He's got a bone right, to pick with me. Okay. I got to hear about it. All right. How do I, all how right, did I all right, all right, hold on. Well, you see, because that was I all the pre-show. Now we got to get into the top in the show. We never even played the intro Here of the we go. show. Here we go. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. <laughs> Janky Town. Janky. Hit the ground. Janky. We can get the Janky pop and that's a sound. Janky. Janky. We make your frown. Janky. Go upside down. Janky. It's getting janky. <laughs> the greatest pound for pound. What up, Mo? Jack. What up, Dave? Jack. What up, O? Jack. What up, James? Jack. What up, Mugs? Jack. What up, Dave? What up, Jack. Light? What up, O? Jack. What up, James? Jack. It's getting janky. It's getting janky. It's getting janky. I love it when we jank around. It's getting janky. It's getting janky. It's getting janky. I love it when we jank around. Janky. I heard that hit. Uh, Hit number one on the Billboard uh, hip hop chart. It did. It yeah, did. it did. It did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My mind. That's right. This is Janky mind. Town episode number thirty-one. Thanks for tuning in, and <laughs> and we'll see you later. <laughs> As always, you can play hit the us outro. Up, hit us up on the email <laughs> jankytown69 at gmail.com. and always uh, the Jank line is standing by for you. That number is eight five five Janky six nine. And now here's Beer Mug with more. <laughs> <laughs> Lightning on uh, next time you come on Janky Town. No, I have a you bone gotta to do, it now. You. Now, do it now. Take care. Now the show's over. The Thanks show's over. Listening. You gotta wrap it up. Let's do it, man. No, do come it. on. Do it. No. All right. What, on the real. What, what, what did I do? Hold on a second. After, I thought that after our French kiss, we were bonded forever. Oh, that's I know. right. You're, I'll never. You guys I'll, back I'll, down. I still have pictures of that. I still have pictures of that. You were wearing like this, like. Like this white f- f- faux fur coat. It was amazing. It, it disturbs me that you can remember what I was wearing. But first off, that was my only. Uh, uh, Your skin my was own, soft. My, my only. You had a, in my, my whole life, my only sense homosexual of cool experience. Water cologne. <laughs> yeah, it was. Oh, it was my best homosexual experience. <laughs> and only. Well, how so, many? I was just going to ask. So weird. <laughs> yeah. So what's your what's your um, uh, bone to pick with me? What did I? What, how did I with, offend Beer Mug? Well, I was um, scrolling through. Instagram as I am as I'm known to do and who isn't nowadays uh, and I see all these people that I follow three of them being these pretty professional high up well-known jujitsu guys and lightning I don't think I, I will never forget this but you you, you might have forgotten some details but do you remember when we shot the video uh, MMA beer mug about it was I would say it was like uh, 2009 2010 Yes, I remember yes. the session very well. Okay. Well, for some reason, I have no idea where that video is. And I don't know if that's your fault or who owned it. It's CBS at the time. Uh, where is that video? Well, originally, that video was put up on a proprietary player that CBS owned, then because we wanted YouTube and they wouldn't allow us to use YouTube because they couldn't monetize it. 
And then we eventually got authority to put it on YouTube. And then somehow we lost our access to that YouTube channel. I don't recall why or what. And so we had to re-upload everything to another YouTube Somebody channel. Somebody just couldn't remember and the then, password. They were like, ah, I, I don't forgot even know. it, man. I don't, honestly, I was, it was, the whole thing's ridiculous. And every time we lost video footage. Uh, so then I re-uploaded it to YouTube. And then I think in the transition somewhere between CBS and Entercom, Entercom wanted to erase everything that had to do with the former morning show. And that was some of that content, I think, was taken down. Oh, yeah. I, I believe, I believe that raw video would have been like an MP4 file is on a hard drive in Cody's office or Carlos's office at your Wilshire building in, in, mm -hmm. in a drawer somewhere. Now, raw meaning pre-edited? No, edited. At, well, all the raw clips, I saved everything. Okay. Okay. So I would have shot that on a mini DV recorder. That's how right. long ago that I think that was. And then um, I put it, no, I shot that on my personal recorder. But hey, it doesn't matter. The point is, is that those should be the raw files and right. the edited piece. B MMA beer mug should be at your building. Okay, we're gonna, we're, I'm gonna try to track that down. That, that's my, that's my year's 2021 mission. Okay. Uh, for janksters who haven't seen MMA you beer got your mug, ass in the beat, I got my ass. Fucked up. I got yeah. triangle. Legitimately, this was like you got knocked out. Not knocked out, but you got you got uh, your air. You, oh no 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 no, no. gasping for oh, air. Oh no 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 no. Out. Omar or uh, the light. I got knocked out, and and you didn't get up. You're again. the reason. <laughs> you're the reason that it didn't make it to the video because Is that true? if you recall, well, first of all, I got triangle choked for real. I got neck kicked by a Muay Thai coach for real. My legs gave out. I got rear naked choked for real, and then the the the, the creme de la creme, which lightning you did you failed to record, is me getting right hooked by this uh, three hundred pound oh, man whose nickname was God. the Cuban tree stump. Is the Cuban I tree stump? I remember this. Now. And he Orlando Sanchez. He's like the like one of the top jujitsu guys uh, around. Uh, uh, another guy, Homolo. If if you're into jujitsu or MMA, this guy Homolo Baral. This guy is like the number one. He like trains UFC guys, right? He's in the video choke, triangle choking me. And then Alberto, who was in the UFC, whose gym it was, Alberto Crane, he was, I think he gave me a rear naked or something. But anyway, this video was awesome, minus the fact that you forgot to record the knockout. But, which, by the way, so I get knocked out, right? And this is like probably... The first time I've ever, but besides like slipping and falling and hitting my head being knocked out, this is like the first time I've ever been punched and knocked out. Mm. And I'm wearing headgear. And that's in, in, the, in, the, in Orlando has 16 ounce gloves on. And he straight up right cross. Omar, were you there? No, you weren't there, there, Omar. No, no Omar was not there. It was, it was me, it was Mike, you, and Dave, Psycho Mike. Me, oh, Dave Mike, was there too. Dave, that's right. And, yeah. And, 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 and so Orlando throws this right cross. Oh, it was a, I'm sorry, right hook. To my chin, my chin goes like this, and I just fall down the wall. You just buckled, yeah. I just buckled, and I come to, and I remember, I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. I just made the greatest video by letting this 300-pound <laughs> piece of muscle knock me out. Straight sure. up like jackass style. Straight up just putting my body on the line. And I come to, and I'm like, oh my God, that was, that was fuck. I, I'm so happy. I'm looking at you, Lightning. The first person I look to is you. And I remember, I'll never forget this. You're like, uh, we got to do that again. I wasn't rolling. <laughs> Lightning I wasn't, fucking I wasn't, Scorsese. I wasn't screwing with you either, yeah. Oh, man. And you were not fucking around. You really did not get that. Now, the I don't whole, recall the whole... why, though. I, I do recall that I didn't get it. I do recall that distinctly because I don't, think I don't you, cherish you, those you, moments of fucking You just didn't hit record. Me. You had it all. You had the camera on me, and you just were not rolling, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm. So... You straight up suggested, well, we got to do it again. I mean, at least try. Like, uh, and Orlando, God bless <laughs> well, him. I had to get like, the footage somehow. <laughs> like, but, but Orlando was like, dude, I mean, I can't really, like, it, I don't want to knock you out again, dude. Like, I really knocked you out the first time. I don't want to <laughs> knock you knock you out again. So it's like, on it's not video, <laughs> if we ever find this video, on video, 
he 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 doesn't really the second one wasn't great but like i i just want to get the video for posterity because that trevor who made the uh, um who farted uh you're welcome moana parody he did the intro for mma beer mug it was like it's mma beer mug <laughs> or or yeah some like crazy like wrestling 80s kind of like you know metal style but right yeah i want to get that video on the video the second time it just not it doesn't look as good when i'm getting knocked out but I, the the funny ones in that video were me getting choked out and and neck kicked like legit dude I'm the, the neck kicked is the one that looked when you got chopped on the neck yeah like that it really looks like it hurts like yeah, it did. It fucking hurt. Painful. And the the craziest thing that like the, the, the crazy thing about your body, like my legs literally just gave out because I guess if you, <laughs> you, you you hit that that artery or that nerve hard enough in your neck, which he did. He this guy he was a Muay Thai coach, and he just straight up what and he and he was like with 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 like skilled precision and accuracy the guy's a pro we were a right. little fearful as you recall mike and i were a little fearful that he could kill you because yeah i mean again these guys can, i mean they can easily kill someone and he and he knew that and so he he pulled he dialed it back like eight tenths or and well, still I say, and it's he still, was at two tenths i should say yeah yeah and i think also orlando by the way he knocked me out but it, i that's i know for a fact that's not a he hit me hard but he didn't hit i don't think it was his hardest which is even scarier but um, like i need to find that video like we need to play like oh the janks is near need to hear it i mean it's because i always thought like oh cbs like probably thought it was a liability and lightning just handed it over no with, like, no 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 i don't i don't think so there were some of those videos um but i don't think like you would think that kevin's kesha video would have come down and stuff like that but yeah no 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 i i, I don't think that there was any legality any yeah. legal issues that i mean the saddest down. i just think it was, the saddest what sorry like go ahead i i just think it was one of those issues where it got lost and uh you know yeah. in, in moving from youtube to youtube or that stuff we yeah. need to find it because i mean the saddest part is like these top level jujitsu guys like these guys are celebrities in that world you know and i'm like all yeah. that work and i remember i talk about i had pre-ptsd with that like after i was so happy that we shot the video but i was literally when i knew like like you know when i think it was mike pitched it or something because i might have like Opened my mouth, like yeah, I could train with those guys, and like, yeah. you know, that that just opens now, up the floodgates. Was, in the- let me ask you this, because there was a time, as you recall, when Kevin didn't want to do anything on camera. So I, I left the morning show to go start this digital department at at, at K Rock, right. and that was my thing. That was my jam. Like I thought that the future of the radio station was going to be, you know, uh, multimedia, and. So Kevin and Bean would, would just, they were busy guys and didn't want to be on the camera as much as I would have liked them to. And right. so Beer Mug became the focal point of so much stuff. He and Mike, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. Mike's out there slinging hot Cheetos and stuff mm-hmm. and, 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 and Beer Mug is, is getting beat up. But like, was this, was the MMA Beer Mug pre or post bubble wrap Beer Mug? That was pre bubble wrap beer mug. Okay, that was pre okay. uh, MMA beer mug. That was... Omar. Oh, dude, I, I loved it. It's bubble it... wrap beer mug. Yeah, it's mug. bubble wrap it's... beer mug. <laughs> He's that such was an fun. asshole. <laughs> that was awesome. And we, who'd you say was an asshole, Kevin? No, in the intro, I call him an asshole. It's yeah, bubble yeah, 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 yeah. We bubble wrapped beer mug and we put a motorcycle helmet on him and goggles and threw yeah. everything we could at him. And I yeah. went, I, I, I brought my go ped, which does about <laughs> twenty three miles an hour, or yeah. maybe yeah. faster. And I went full throttle and crashed into and knocked him off his feet. And yeah. I went flying and stuff. And that Kevin one, is throwing, Kevin's throwing uh, plates. Ch- plates there was like a paint, and weren't they shooting paintballs at you? Paintballs? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I got with three paintball guns po- yeah. like, at me, right? And the, I remember I was jumping up and down because they were hitting me the bubble wrap. I couldn't yeah. feel the paintballs. Right. But as I was jumping up and down, I don't know who it was. I think it was Catherine Wood. He went down low and hit me in the ankle, <laughs> in the foot. Yeah. And right. it just took, I just. Midair hit me boom. Oh. I, who, who, the star, the, one the star that, of that. Who's the one what? that threw a? Uh, the, who's the one that threw the car battery at you? <laughs> oh my oh, god, that was you, of course. Wow, like, was it? Any, any car part you're <laughs> gonna be a they, part they, of. If I'm remembering, it wasn't right. me though. No, I, I, I didn't do it. I think might have been Dave. Car battery. Oh, it might have been. Yeah. yeah, that was. <laughs> didn't somebody <laughs> car drop, battery drop kick you? Or am I, is that something? Else? Yeah, oh, yeah, Mike. Mike drop kicked me. Oh, okay. Mike straight up ran up and drop kicked me. And lightning like on his go pad just shoulder shoulder led just 
boom, right? Dude, like those and, and, and his tumble was pretty good yeah. too. Like he, you remember he when put Kevin his body took, on the line? Kev, Kevin took a whole thing like two two dozen eggs and started throwing yeah. them at you. Oh my god! And they were bouncing off you, and they were hitting the BMW behind oh, you. And it was no! a salesperson's car. Yeah, and, yeah, and he, the sales oh, dude comes out and we're like wiping off egg. It wasn't even a salesperson. It was like a potential client oh, or something. Yeah, that's right. It was even worse. <laughs> that's hilarious. That's funny. We got it's it. Bubble well, wrap that, beer that mug. Bubble wrap beer mug, I think, still exists on YouTube. But I, I want to find. And then we did a second. And you might have been there. Like we did a second MMA beer mug. But it, this this video, it was cool. It was with um. Uh, is the, Chad is Jordan, the rest of the all, podcast just you describing beer mug videos? Beer mug. Yeah, we need to do a <laughs> podcast of beer mug videos, dude. I'm telling you, we gotta find like. I, and that's the thing. I don't we're know saying, if it's like, gonna translate. I gotta be honest, mugs. A lot of that video. I know that you're kind of <laughs> waxing poetically about this video, but I think a lot of it's gonna be like ooh ah. <laughs> you know, it's gonna like a cartoon. Yeah. It's not gonna. It, there's not a lot of dialogue where you're. You That's know, true. You know. <laughs> Except the intro, the 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 ooh ah it, and then the outros. But I mean, probably. But, yeah, that it's, was it's, that was a good time. Uh, uh, well, I'm I, sorry I, that I didn't shoot that. I didn't realize that you were, have been harnessing this hate, this this hate yeah for, forever for Dude. me all the for all these years since I, I missed that. I mean that's uh. not the only time that I wasn't rolling accidentally. There was a there was a soccer player in like ninety four, some guy that uh I thought I was rolling for or that I either didn't record on reel to reel or I taped over and Kevin held it over my head for like four years. He's oh, like, "It's a soccer well, player. What about that one it. interview that you didn't recall?" <laughs> oh my God, they love doing that. They would, oh, had the, dude. They would oh, yeah. just bust balls like no other. Oh, forever! You would never live it down. Oh, Whatever the well, one thing you could do a million things right, and then that one thing, Kevin and Bean knew how to just keep reminding you of it. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, they they knew your pain point. They yeah. they knew it better than any chiropractor yeah, ever would. Totally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh. all right thank, like, thank you so much for uh for joining us uh this time bye for real bye all right okay bye <laughs> later lightning